My name is Lewis Burris. I'm from Joshua Tree, California. I own a business called El Coyote Pottery. I'm headed out to a dry, dry lake bed to get clay and uh, process it to make some products. And that's what this video is all about. So um, come along with the journey and see what we're going to do. And maybe it'll be something that will interest you as well. I studied uh, ceramics in uh, Minnesota State University at Moorhead and uh, I'm very thankful for that degree and it's enabled me to do a lot of things that if you just get in as a hobbyist you may not know but that's why we got YouTube so you can go out there and learn things that some of us have already went to school to learn. All right, folks, we're, we're almost there. You can see the hillsides out there possibly, and you maybe have noticed a little rock and all that. But as we move out here, we're gonna go into this flat area, flat lake bed. And what it really is, is where all the water from around here has run down into this area. And when it floods down in here, the clay is lighter than all the other stuff. So it kind of sits on top, and the rocks and the dirt, they kind of filter down, and what's left on top is the clay. And so today, as we're, this is the purpose, is to come out here and find ourselves some clay that we can work with. Now I'm turning off this little path. And, and out here, it's, it's higher and it's rocky and all that. But now we're moving into the actual dry lake bed and I'm actually now driving right on top of clay and if you look at it you can see some wet stuff there it looks like clay and it's cracked up what you need to know if you come out here do not absolutely do not ever come out here right after a rain you will get stuck and uh, it could be a hard day but today it's a it's a first of March it's about 40, 45 degrees out in sunny Southern California in the high desert. And it's a perfect day for collecting clay. How about that? So here we are. All right. A couple tools of the trade here. A couple buckets, a pick, a shovel. And if I wanted to take a half a ton home, I'd pull the truck up and just throw it right in there. But I'm just looking for a few uh, buckets to do what I need to do today. So, another thing is, this is a little harder than it looks. That's why I got the, the, the pick here. Alright, I'm going to have to dig. Well, as you can see, there's a little bit of a workout here. Taking some time and axe this out with a, this pick here. Some people, this is just dirt. Okay? But when I get this back and process it, it's going to be the basis for some pots or other things that are of value. And uh, the world has been working with clay for thousands upon thousands of years. And here I am in the 21st century. I'm just another potter. But um, I can go down and buy clay that's already processed. But there's something about coming out here and digging up your own clay and doing something with it. So some of you would like to do that or at least are interested enough to see what's going on here. So here I've dug it up. I'm going to put it in the buckets and uh, go process it. Uh, stay. It's obedience training. All right, here we go. Okay, this is the stuff we shoveled up. It's just, to some people, dirt, it's clay. Well, with this, this kind of dirt processed properly, turned into clay, this is a plate that's been made in the past. It's what we call horsehair raku. Um, after the clay was processed and made into a, a clay that could be used, we make a plate, in this case, and then 
uh, the, the, after it was fired, what we call bisque, then it was taken and put into another kiln and it was heated up to a reasonable temperature of probably about 1600 degrees Fahrenheit, taken out red hot, and then applied horsehair that goes and it's, it singes on here and some feathers and all that's been carbonized into it now. That won't wash off. But this, this right here is strictly a decorative piece but it's something that could come out of the ground. And so um, I take this dirt, go home, process it, do the work, and hopefully somebody will have a piece like this in the future. And it came from El Coyote Pottery and use yours truly. <laughs> well, we made it back to the house from that like five mile drive that way. That's what's really nice about it. It's just out there a little ways. And here's the dirt that we picked up. Oh, dirt, yeah, it's clay, it's dirt. But uh, what I'm gonna do now is I got water here, I'm gonna mix it into this clay and bring it into kind of a soup. So, water, just water. And then I have a half inch drill here with a whip. We're not really advertising for some of those big box stores, but there you go. I've taken a drill and I mixed that up a bit, but I got something I want to do here. This is called ball clay, Kentucky ball clay to be exact. And the reason why I'm going to add this to this is because almost any clay that you go dig up isn't by itself what you want. So as a potter, I know what I want. I want something that I can actually throw on a wheel. And yeah, you can throw it, but this will make it work a lot better. And, uh, if you're a potter, you'll know all the science about that. I'm not going to explain that right now. But I'm just going to add about 20% into this. Okay. And then I'm going to go back and mix up what I have here. So here we go. Mix it right up. Another bucket. Strainer. And mud pie. Well, anyway, all we're doing is working this through the strainer, and because of its th thickness and consistency, this could take a little while. Um, you can do several things. You could actually water this down more, but then it will take longer to get the water out. But anyway, each person that does this has to kind of figure out for themselves a little bit of what works best. All right. Now you can see there's still junk in here, but most of that's all the way through there. I had a little tool that I was kind of using it instead of my hands. Your hands will wear out if you're running against that screen. But uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go off to the side and dump the junk out. And I'm going to put more in there. It's a slow process, but if you want to be able to use the local clay and do something with it is just part of what you got to do. Well, we put this out here to dry, and if you look at it, this doesn't have as much sheen as it used to. This was a little thinner, and you can see it has less sheen. I can actually literally peel this off. Isn't that kind of fun? I know there's all of a sudden, if you got some 10 year olds, they're all going to be wanting to be ceramicists. I got it. Okay, some of that's still wet. But you can get the idea now, this is starting to be something that I can actually make into that ball of clay that I can use, okay? Now this right here, I'm going to take a little, I can peel it up and flip it over. I'm just going to flip it over. The, the idea is, is to actually work it and turn it until I do have the clay that I need. And the, the truth of the matter is, this is a little soppy, so I'm just going to put it back down and let it set. There will be a time when I can peel it off good, and that will be the time for me to turn it. But in the, in the end of all this, the, the water is escaping, and it's becoming something. Now, something was mentioned is, you can look at this, this is dried out, and it's just like out there at the dry lake bed, it's just drying up. 
Now I can't really use that, but um, this this clay right here it'll come off at some point. I can if I keep working it, I'll be able to use it. All right, we have some of this clay that's come out. You can see it's flexible, nice and soft, no rocks. And this is another plaster table that I have. That I, it's a wedging table. Wedging is working this clay kind of like you do dough, like a baker might work dough. And the idea is to work all the air out. And then also, the more you work it, the more consistent it becomes. And what we're going to do here is we're getting all the air out and the consistency. And then I'm going to have something that I can take to the wheel and throw into a bottle, a jar, or something, and we're, you're going to see that in just a few minutes. But in the meantime, I'm working it, and it actually takes, you need to work it enough that you actually, each time I push this, you have a surface that has been stretched, and the air that was near there can be pulled out. I have to do it enough that I work all the way through the clay, and all the air has a chance to escape. I actually like to do this for rock and roll music. <laughs> it makes it easier. You kind of go with the beat. But anyway, today we're just you and me and the clay. <laughs> well, look at that. And I got a nice little roll. I shape it. And that right there is about ready to be thrown. So let's go throw it. Clay. A while back it was just dirt. Well it still is just dirt but it's in a form now that I can work. So here we go. Potter's wheel. And I'm going to slap it right here on the center. Turn the wheel on. And it started to turn. Now I'm not going to tell you all the little things about throwing pottery. At this stage it's kind of like either you know how or you don't. There's plenty of instruction on that. So those that know what I'm doing, just watch. And those that don't, well, watch. A little water, speed it up. Uh, most of you, I know, know that this is a centering process. It's a process by which I bring the clay into a, a centering. So what we're going to try and make is going to be a symmetrical piece of pottery. I wobble. Some people get excited about it, but I'm not. It can do different things even like this. It's still centered. The real centering actually comes when I take it down like I'm going to do right now. I'm pushing it down, 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 more down. And now I'm holding it right here and I'm pushing it down. And you can see that that's pretty well centered. I've got a tool right here. It's got a straight edge to it. If I put it up there, you can see that even though this isn't completely straight, it's moving right along there. And if I actually push it in, I can take off. But anyway, the point is, is it's centered. Now I can work with it. And I'm going to do what they call open it up. I press with my fingers into the clay and push down and down and down and down. I have experience. Some people that don't, they would take a needle tool, test the depth, the depth, but I know how far down I am. Put my finger down, bring it across, and I'm this is what they call opening the clay. Completed that opening yet, but now I'm grabbing in the clay like this on the inside and have a finger on the outside, and I'm going to raise the clay up. As we've already been saying, this is local clay. I've added a little bit of Kentucky ball clay to make it more plastic so that I can throw it. 
And now, here we go, we're going to throw this. That wobble you see there, I want to take it out. And I'm doing what they call collaring. In a sense, I just recentered it, but it's a little taller than it was. Okay? All you experts out there might be critiquing my ability here, it's okay. Oh, anyway, I just raised this up a little bit. I only started from here up because if you start at the very bottom of a large piece, by the time you get to the top, the bottom is too weak for the top. So I get the top thrown, and then I go down into the bottom and raise it up. And a lot of this is by feel. I'm actually going to use a sponge here, and I'm going to slow this down a little, go into the inside. A lot of people are fascinated by this. I am one. It's always, I like watching other potters do this. It's amazing that you can take the mud, the dirt that's out there, and process it into something that you can get on a wheel like this and make it into something that's useful. Okay, we're reaching into the inside, pushing in on the bottom, and pushing out on the inside and coming on up. be ambidextrous which makes me able to use both hands. That was done so that you could see it. That isn't normally how a right-hander would do it, but um, that gives you the idea, okay? So now, as you can see, this piece of clay that we have is getting taller and taller and taller, and it's a process of just thinning the walls and pulling it. They call it pulling it. So I'm pulling the clay up as I go. Now, what I'm going to do, I got what they call ribs. This is a plastic rib. These are just plastic. The red has a certain color, thick, thick, it has a color, but it means it has a certain thickness. I'm slowing this down. I'm reaching inside, and again, for the camera purposes, I'll go left handed. I'm going here, and what I'm doing is I'm strengthening the wall by putting pressure on both sides. Okay, I've got to change because i got a wrinkle I want to get out. So, I'll go to the other side here. This wrinkle is caused from, it's getting thin enough that it's the, the weakness is causing the pot to want to fall a little bit. So in correcting it, I'm using a rib to help compress the clay to make it stronger, okay? And some people get all excited when they have that kind of a problem. Well, that would be the end of a lot of people throwing on that piece right there. But as we go through this, You can see I'm working out that weakness that was in there. And the weakness, as I already said, was from the thinning, but the compression helps strengthen that back up. And it also gives me a stronger piece.
it's obvious on the video, I'm sure you can see this, it's slightly out of round. And I got a needle tool right here, and all I'm going to do is cut off this top piece. And what I have now, this is probably more like what the thickness is all the way up this thing. It might be a little thicker at the bottom. I'm going to work on it a little bit because what we want to do is have a nice finished product. So allow me just a little bit of work. Put a little water for lubrication on the outside and a little on the inside. And again, Now I would say this is about as tall as this piece is going to be. And I want to make a top here, so I'm going to actually bend this over and bring it back to itself. And what we have then now is a thickened part up here in the stronger. I'm going to also do what they call collar. I'm going to bring that in slightly. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bell the bottom out and kind of finish it off so it's a nice shaped pot, okay? And uh, kind of reminder, I know you guys all know this, but we're look, working with local clay. Okay, so here we go. I'm, I'm pushing on the inside towards the outside and you can see it's starting to bell out now. And I, I bring it up. And I'm controlling it a little bit on the outside with my hand. You see how I'm kind of controlling that. And I get to a certain point here. I just release my pressure a little bit. And I'm going to shape it some more. A little bit of water. And I still want to do a little compression on the walls here. So I'm back to that, but I have my shape. This is the basic shape I'm gonna go with. And I got a stainless steel rib on the outside. I can bend it and do stuff. I got a plastic rib on the inside and just a little more compression, taking out any little, little lumps or excess clay. I think we're going to have a nice piece here. Now to finish this, I just use the same plastic rib and take off some excess water here, nothing serious. And there's some excess clay down here I want to get rid of. right here it's hiding the tools like to play hide and seek because what happens is the clay gets on them and then they, everything looks the same every potter knows that you have a problem sometimes finding your tools but somebody's invented all kinds of different ways of keeping track of your tools all I'm doing right here is kind of cutting off a little excess clay at the bottom now as you look at this you might go wow that kind of looks like something I've seen in history books or other things, well, pottery's been being made since the beginning of time. Okay, there's a few more little details. I'm gonna slow it down. Put my hand on the inside, get a little wet, and I want it just a little different, a little different shape here. I don't know if you can see it on camera. I'll put that down there. This has got a little rounded shape and I'm using it at the bottom 
to make kind of a rounded bottom. Something else that astute people will see is there's a little line right here. I made a line on purpose. I'll put another line right here. Then I'll make some marks. Some of you will know what I'm talking about. This is just a uh, like a credit card or something, but this happens to be a AAA that's no longer any good. And I used a pink and shears to cut that edge. And I got some different shapes here. I'm going to use this one right here. And I'm going to put some lines in here. Now let's take a look at that. Okay. So. As you can see there's a little bit of something down here at the bottom not exactly wanting so I'll work on that for just a moment but we're almost done. Alright we've made this uh, vessel and I have a wire cutoff tool a lot of potters actually would work with a bat already on the wheel. Um, I do at times, but I've made this right on the wheel. So I'm going to take it off the wheel, put it on the bat, and show you a couple more little things. Um, the first thing I am going to do is take out a little excess water on the bottom. What we have is a little sponge on a stick. The next thing is I will cut the piece. Right off the bat here. Now, with a little bit of water, I put the water behind it like that. Then I take the cutoff wheel, I mean the cutoff wire, sorry, and I drag the water underneath, and you can see how that just sucked it right over to the side. Now, I have this set up so it can slide out, and I put my hand right underneath it and slide it out onto my hand, and then put it up here on the bat. Okay, now, this is the, the finished piece as far as the throwing part goes, but it's not finished until, well, it's finished. But it needs to go through uh, what's called bisque. It's about 1600 degrees Fahrenheit. And then after it gets out of that, it'll be hardened. That hardened shape then is something that I can do something with. If you want to talk about glazes, if you want to talk about pit fire, you want to talk about raku. There's various things that I can do with the surface on this afterwards. But now we need to go out here and I'm going to show you the kiln which I'm going to fire this in when it's dry. Well at the moment it's still on the bat. It's not even dry yet. You can see some sheen on it maybe. But it's going to have to dry all the way until there's no water in it. This right here is an electric kiln. And with this electric kiln I would be able to um, actually bisque uh, maybe a hundred pieces depending on their size okay and I would put it inside the kiln and I would turn it on and it would go up to about 1600 degrees which would take about six or seven hours depending on how fast it climbs and then afterwards I would take that out and decide what kind of process of, to finish it that I want to do okay so that'll be the next step on our little um, well saga <laughs> <laughs> Hello folks, this is that pot we were looking at when I threw it on the wheel. It was made from local clay, just about five miles out that way. The local market right here in Joshua Tree, California, and the natural park over there. Usually it's nice and sunny today. Yeah, okay, it's overcast, but people are out. And uh, anyway, take another nice look at that. And here's some other pieces made with the local clay. I 
like them all. What are your other favorites? So where do you find the clay? Oh, uh, there's a dry lake bed that's out there. I almost call it Sunset. It's about five miles from here. And uh, we dig it up and, mm -hmm. and uh, process it. Yeah. Cool. That sounds like so much fun. You did have that one, but. Oh, yeah. Although he is pretty spoiled. Okay. Yeah, that's what you need? Yeah, they have it. All right. Right. Um, we do? Wrapped up sack though? Oh. Okay. Right. Thank you. Cheers. I tried to have my whole thing of satisfaction. It's a dark chocolate. It's a raw individual. Yeah, it tastes nice. Can you bring it down? No, I... I the stain and do stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a decorative. It's pretty. I like that. This one looks like a tree. It's right here. Where are you all from? Philadelphia. Oh. All right. Welcome to the desert. So you want wrapped up in sack dough? Ah, yes, please. Take it wrapped and get a piece of paper here. So where are you all from? New Jersey. Yeah. New York. New York and New Jersey. They're right beside each other, right? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> you made it all the way out here. Did you walk? <laughs> cycle, cycle, park the way. Oh. <laughs> Well, uh, I know you got the coffee in there, but you, you need to have a mug to put it in. That's weird. That's we were, that's what we were thinking. thinking the same thing. They're, pretty, they're beautiful. Yeah, yeah. These are the two you want? Those are the two. Okay. So where are you all from? Um, we're going to Boston. All right. So what brought you up into this area? Going into the park today. Yeah, wow. we're going to go explore. But then we saw this. Joshua Tree Park. All right. Joshua Tree Park. Boston! Boston? <laughs> <laughs> I can tell I actually get it done, I just say. Yeah. yeah. Do you like this one? Yeah, you too. too. This is where the zoo is down too. <laughs> Wait, what are you doing? I kind of like these like okay. medium sized ones out here. I'm just going on our side. So, where about are you from? Uh, Czech, well, I'm from here. I'm from the Czech Republic. So, so you came all the way here and now you're going back to Czech and Slovakia? Uh, yes. Yeah. 